What's going on everybody? In this video, I'm taking you guys into Lightroom and showing you guys how to make those colors pop in your images. All right guys, so the first image we are gonna go over is an image I took of Cerro Torre in Patagonia. Now, this image here was taken at sunrise uh, just as some color was kind of hit these peaks and the color lasted about two minutes. Uh, it wasn't very long at all before it was covered up by some clouds. So I kind of want to go over what I do normally, my workflow as far as Lightroom, uh, making some color adjustments and kind of saturating colors. And what you guys are going to find out here is I very rarely, I, actually only one slider that I use that's a global adjustment, which means one slider that controls saturation or any kind of adjustment over the entire image. Almost everything that I do is going to be color based and local which means specific areas specific tones and specific colors so let's get into it so here you're gonna see that uh, my image I captured is is properly exposed nothing's blown out but what I want to do is bring down the highlights in a lot of this and bring back some of this detail in the snow so obviously the first thing I want to do is bring down these highlights and you're gonna see here the colors really nice well, I want to bring the white balance down a little bit to a little bit more of a blue color. So I think I want to bring it down just a little bit, maybe down to maybe 5705. That looks pretty good. I'm not really worried about what's going on in the sky right now. I'm trying to look into the shadows here and see it was a, a very cold morning and uh, you know, the, the sun wasn't coming up yet, but not quite up yet. So everything in the shadows was still a little bit blue. You know, you got some glaciers up here. So uh, I kind of want to keep those shadows kind of cool. And uh, as far as tint goes, negative three looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to mess with that too much. Uh, so the next thing I want to do before I get into the color here is I'm going to bring a little bit of texture in here. Um, and you can be pretty liberal with the, with the texture slider. And this is a pretty new slider that... Uh, Adobe just came out with a couple of months ago and it really works well in these detail areas the kind of like the the finer details the the rocks and the, the lines in these glaciers it really does well with that I mean I I love the slider so much more than the clarity and the dehaze because uh, it, it's you can use it more liberally it doesn't bring so much noise when you use that clarity and dehaze slider adjust the contrast just like the texture but they're a lot heavier and they do introduce noise very quickly so I try to really go go slowly on that so okay guys so the next slider I want to talk about is in the calibration panel so if you don't know what the color calibration panel is is you have a red primary a green primary and a blue primary what this does is this targets the red across all the colors. so every single color even the blues that you've seen in your photo Every color is made up of red, green, and blue. There's a little bit of color in each one. So what these do is they target the red or the blue or the green across all the colors. That's different than the HSL panel. So the HSL panel targets individual colors. So we'll get to that in just a second, but the calibration is it targets the blue in all the colors or the red in across all the colors. So what I never, what I usually do is I never touch the red and I never touch the green. What I'll do is I'll come down here to the blue primary and I'll start to drag saturation over and I, and I'll be pretty liberal with this. You know, I'll come up to, you know, and I'm look, what I'm looking at here is the warm colors. So I'm looking at the reds and I'm looking at, you know, some of these warmer tones in here to see where they're going to be at. So I can bring it up to maybe like 80 and I'll zoom in here and kind of see these fall colors and kind of look and see what it's doing and I like what it's doing to the Alpen glow up here so I'm not worried about what it's doing to the blue right now we're gonna change that here in just a second the reason why I do the blue primary and not the red or the green is I find that the blue tones generally can handle more saturation and need more saturation than the reds in the warm so you know if I was to do the red primary I wouldn't be able to go very far with it before those reds start to really get oversaturated. But if I use the blue primary, and I'm going to turn this on and off, and I'm going to show you guys these reds here when I when I just adjust the blue. So you can see here off and on. You can see how much those reds get saturated by that blue primary. That's why I can be so liberal with it. You know, I can drag it up to 81, or even really I can drag it up to 100, 
and those reds still look really good but I'm gonna keep it probably about 84 and zoom back out again and now you can see what happened with the blues are a little more saturated than I prefer especially in the sky so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the HSL panel and uh, under the saturation I'm gonna kinda bring the blue down in saturation to maybe negative uh, let's see about negative 20 looks pretty good I think uh, that removes some of that heavy saturation in the sky which is kinda where I wanted it to be uh, I didn't really like that that uh, the oversaturation what it did there so I drug it back just a little bit just to kind of uh, to tame those blue saturation uh, colors there so now what I'm gonna do is I want to change the hue now if you guys watched the previous video I talked about color theory and color harmonies and this photo is actually part of the dyad color theory so what I want to do is kinda keep these blues more towards a magenta tone to keep those colors you know closer to that that dyad harmony it doesn't have to be exact kinda like I explained in that last video but I do want to kind of uh, adjust the hue a little bit so I'm gonna take the blue slider and I'm gonna kinda go until I think it looks alright so maybe maybe at about 20 23 no not 28 let's try 23 22 22 looks pretty good I like 22 um, now I want to kind of mess with these aquas a little bit because uh, there is some aqua in the sky and in the, these glaciers a little bit so I'm gonna kind of actually push push those more towards a deeper blue color as well instead of that kind of lighter aqua turquoise almost so I'm gonna kind of drag this up until I'd say it looks about maybe there at plus eight so I will uh, turn this on and off and show you guys kind of what that did. You can see a huge difference and and because I tried to stick with that dyad color harmony, uh, the blues look so much better with the reds and, the, and what's going on with the rest of the scene. So to me, I like it a little bit better. Maybe I'll even touch with the luminance. So I'm going to come down here to the luminance and I think what I want to do is kind of bring it down. So darken it up just a little bit. So I want to come into the blue and just maybe maybe go a little bit darker maybe like 18 maybe like 12 so I think 12 looks pretty good um, turn that on and off so you can see a huge difference there and those colors are a lot more pleasing that blue with the reds a lot more pleasing to the eye the next thing I do with color is I'm gonna come into the split toning now the split toning here because I have deep blue skies I want to change the hue just a little bit. I mean, just a little bit on, into this warmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little box here, and it's going to bring up some colors. And what I probably want is going to be right around this area. I want to bring a little bit of red and a little bit of warmth to the skies and to the highlights. So maybe at like Q4, 4 degrees. And then once I get the color that I want, it's obviously way too heavy. So the saturation is right down here. I'm going to probably bring that down a lot maybe down to what looks good to me is probably gonna be six um, yeah six looks pretty good I think that that's gonna work out fine so I'm gonna click that on and off and see uh, it just brought in just just a little more of the red into the sky so it's not quite so blue so to me that looks a lot better I love the color of the sky so much more and so I think I want to leave it just like that. So overall, I love the scene. I love the way these colors match. And so the very last thing I'm going to do here is I want to add a little bit of color into both of these icebergs here. So I'm going to grab a radial filter and I'm going to kind of stretch it over the, the iceberg and the reflection uh, a little bit. And what I want to do is zero everything out and the temperature I want to go down I want to bring a little bit more blue into it so I'm gonna go down to maybe like minus 11 and then exposure maybe maybe up in exposure just a little bit maybe to like 15 that looks pretty good just to bring a little bit more texture and a little bit more out of the shadow to make them pop just a little bit and maybe I'll bring up even texture just a little bit and because this texture is so subtle I can really kind of drag it up a little bit just to bring out the details 
in those um, in the details and we'll zoom in here in just a second once I get it finished and I'll show you guys how I because I wanted to bring out these details so but because I've used texture twice now I use texture over the entire image and I also used it in this radio filter I want to maybe reduce some noise a little bit because it probably did bring some noise into this so I want to maybe bring the noise to maybe seven and then let's uh, call that good so let's zoom in and we can see here that some texture was brought out into that extremely good so what I want to do here is turn it on and off so see how it just kind of added that just little bit of color a little bit of exposure and a little bit of details in, in these uh, in this glacier here so I want to do the same thing to the other one now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another radio filter You just add that little bit of pop there made that blue come out so that uh, looks great to me so that's um, that's pretty much gonna be it I think for this photo as far as color goes I don't want to get too crazy anything you know normally what I would do is bring it into Photoshop and, and work with some brushes and things like that but I don't want to get into that I want to stick just to Lightroom on this one so let's do a before and after so hit the backslash button there and you can see before and after so a lot of you know a saturation in some of the areas I got to change the hue and some of the blues and you can see here in the details and the highlights of the mountains you can see just brought a lot back you know we'll zoom in a little bit to this back mountain here you can see all the detail that was brought back before and after you know a real powerful way to, to go about this and a real powerful workflow I think uh, when bringing out color you can see we came a long way with just a few sliders and it didn't take very much alright so we are going to move on now to the next one so this one I took in white pocket uh, a couple of weeks ago in northern Arizona when Chris was out here so this one uh, is gonna have a bit more color to it and so I wanted to kind of go over how I deal with uh, the reds and the, the colorful skies and things like that the first thing I see here is I probably want to cool this down just a little bit just to kind of make these blues a little bit more and, and kind of get a little bit more color and blue color kind of down in this landscape here because it's kind of in shade the sun's not up yet so the, the shadow is going to be a little bit more blue that's what I want to do is kind of bring it I mean just a little bit it doesn't take much you know maybe maybe right around 6033 looks pretty good uh, the tint I, I probably want to add a little bit of magenta to this because it's um, you know golden hour blue hour I want to have a little bit more magenta in there just to get that kind of nice nice tones in the in the shadows all right now the exposure hmm the exposure I think I want to bring up exposure just a little bit now I don't bring up the shadows or bring up exposure very much because you do start to introduce noise but I think I could probably come up maybe about a half a stop on this so maybe 0.4 looks pretty good. I kind of like where that's at, but right over here in this side, uh, I got some blown out highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag those highlights back down to, uh, I'll just keep it at negative 100. It's pretty easy. So I brought back a lot of detail. So I got detail back in these clouds right here, which are pretty important. So I want to add a little bit of contrast. So you got some blacks down here and you can look up at your histogram. I got a little bit of room when it comes to the blacks. Uh, I want to kind of bring it down just a little bit. And so maybe I'll come down to negative 10 and maybe negative negative 13 negative negative 16 looks okay uh, I, I don't want to you know if this will light up uh, you'll see this kind of highlight if I go too far uh, it's really close right here you see a little blue icon there um, if I hold just kind of hover over this arrow by the histogram here you can see right here I got a little bit there so but that's not a, an important part of the scene so I'm not too worried about it being uh, blown out that way or underexposed now I want to grab texture and I'm gonna bring it uh, liberally I'm gonna use it up to maybe 39 or 40 uh, that looks pretty good I, I like the way that looks it's bringing out some of the texture in these lines and that's looks really really nice so and that's it's really gonna need it that texture really does well with with details like this I can even add a little bit of clarity and and like I said I use clarity very little I mean just 
just lightly, maybe 10. I don't really ever go over 10 because it does start to introduce noise. It seems to look pretty good. And now I'm going to come down to color calibration. And again, like my last photo, I uh, take that blue saturation slider because there's a lot of reds in here. I got to kind of be careful, but because it's blue, I can really be liberal with this and I can probably drag it over and I'm going to keep going here and maybe 80, 77, 80, let's try 83. So, I mean, just that one slider, look at the huge difference in what it did with the colors. I mean, that's, that's huge right there. So that's probably my favorite slider and that is the only slider that I use that's a global adjustment. In other words, it saturates all the colors in the entire image. But uh, obviously up here, I don't like what it's doing to the sky. So what I wanna do is now that I think I like where the reds are at, I'm going to close that up, come into the HSL panel again, and I'm gonna bring the blue saturation down. And I'm just kinda of watching this, this area over here. I'm really watching to see what happens. So I'm at negative eight, and that I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click on and off. You can see how it just kinda of brought that saturation down just a little bit. And I don't mind this aqua color here right now. I think it's okay. Uh, I don't think I'm going to touch it right now at, at this point. Maybe later on when I do a couple other adjustments, I'm going to keep an eye on this. Um, but I like the blue kind of with the red here. I like the transition. I like the color contrast of the warm and the cool tones. So I think for right now, I'm just going to leave it. But I'm going to go into split toning here. And split toning can be really powerful in a sky that looks like this, but you have to be careful with the saturation. So what I'm going to do is click on this box again. And this time, instead of coming over here, I'm going to come over to this side. So it's still going to be in the red, but I'm going to add a little bit of this magenta here. So I'm going to kind of click and drag. And right now I'm at about 330, and that's probably pretty close, maybe a little bit more red. Um, and I like the color, obviously the saturation is way heavy, so I'm gonna drag that saturation down now pretty far. So I'm gonna just kinda of keep an eye on everything. And you can see in the corner it changed that blue, and I like what it's doing, it added a little bit more magenta to that blue. So I'm gonna keep dragging down, cause it's still a bit too much. And maybe right there at 12, 12 looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna click on and off. And man, that, that changed the sky a lot. It's, it may not seem like much while you're doing it, but when you click it on and off like that, that split toning just, man, that helps a lot. So and I'll, I'll kind of zoom in here to these colors and I'm gonna click off. And you can just see the saturation and just the color, how it changed that blue over here and just, it, it was, was huge. It was, it was just a huge difference. So now I'm gonna do something here that's, it's a little bit <laughs> of me showing my control freak side. I want to adjust kind of the color of this. You know, it looks kind of muddied and, and I want to maybe make a bit, a bit more of a, a bluish magenta tone to this pond and this water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a radial filter and I'm going to zero it out and I'm just gonna drag it over this area here and maybe just kind of move it around and make sure I got the water all in there. And then what I want to do is take the temperature and I'm going to make it a little more blue. Not, it doesn't make it, I mean, it doesn't take much, maybe negative four, you know, and then I want to change the tint. So this is where I want to kind of make it a little, just a little more magenta, maybe nine set maybe seven so let's uh, click this on and off so just a little bit it's very subtle there's I mean it's I don't know if you guys can even see that difference but there is absolutely a difference in that and that just helps with the the purple tones with the red to me it looks a little bit better and like I said that's that's very um, <laughs> very particular on my part admittedly but yeah, so that's going to be it. Now, Norm, what I would do is these are very distracting here. So I would go in and I would probably clone these out, these specular highlights here, because it's, it's very distracting. When I look at this image, that's like the first thing that I see. This color, to me, is now ready to go as far as Lightroom goes. We're there. Yeah, that's going to be it, guys, for this, uh, this photo here. Like I said, I would probably take it into 
Photoshop here and do some other brushing and some more uh, more local adjustments and, and a bit heavier post processing in that. So and that'll be in a in a separate tutorial that I'm planning on releasing on the website here, which is it's going to be a full tutorial, a few hours worth of, of content that I'm going to have on the website. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Sign up for the email for that announcement, which will be here in the next month or so. And like always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps. And uh, you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. So I will talk to you guys on the next video. Later.